It's been a while since we've had a reason to get worked up over a Sony phone, but the company's new flagship, the Xperia XZ2, is nothing if not fascinating. It's one of the first phones we've tested that uses the Snapdragon 845 chipset, and it is definitely very fast. Beyond that though, Sony put a lot of work into making this new flagship phone a powerhouse for media consumption and creation. The question is, is anyone going to want one of these things? Let's start with its look. Sony ditched its long-running omnibalanced design language for a curvier, more organic design seen in devices like the PlayStation 4 controller and Sony's Ibo robot dog. It's a notable departure from Sony's norm, but I definitely think the device benefits as a result. The curved back helps it sit nicely in the palm of your hand, and that 5.7 inch 18x9 display helps make the device more narrow than the original XZ1. Your mileage may vary, but it feels pretty lovely. Meanwhile, the rear-mounted fingerprint sensors sit low on the phone's back for what felt like effortless access, and the camera above the fingerprint sensor is aligned in the center, so you're less likely to obscure it accidentally while taking photos. While we're talking about the camera, Sony went with an impressive 19 megapixel motion eye sensor around back, and yeah, there's only one of them. The camera app was far from finished on the XC2s we played with before the show, but the results were still impressive, lots of bright colors and sharp detail, even on a mostly drab New York day. More importantly, you'll now be able to shoot 960 frames per second super slow motion video at full HD. Oh, and since this uses a Snapdragon 845 chipset, you can use the XC2 to shoot 4K HDR video as well. Around the front, you'll find what seems like a modest 5 megapixel camera above the display, but appearances can be deceiving. As it turns out, you can use it for a lot more than just selfies. Last year's XZ1 came with a 3D creator mode that, oddly enough, let you scan objects with the phone's main camera to build 3D models for sharing or sending to 3D printing services. This time around, you can create similar scans with the front-facing camera, and while it isn't exactly the most straightforward feature to use, the results can be quite impressive if you really take your time and do it right. All those photos and 3D models and HDR videos looked punchy and vibrant on the XC2 screen, but there's one fascinating new trick we haven't really gotten to try out yet. Thanks to Sony's X-Reality engine, the XZ2 will upconvert standard SDR videos into HDR videos on the fly. That's a trick that's been a part of televisions for a few years now already, but it's completely novel for a smartphone, and we're really looking forward to taking it for a spin. Given how nice the screen is to look at under normal circumstances, just consider us cautiously optimistic about this. Sony didn't just pay attention to visuals either, it devoted a lot of work to audio performance. The XZ2 supports high-resolution audio and features a front-facing set of S4 stereo speakers for better volume and clarity while you're watching, I don't know, your YouTube videos. Even when you're using your headphones, a built-in DAC ensures the XZ2 is a full 20% louder than the phone it's replacing. Maybe the wildest thing at play here deals with audio too. Sony went with a significantly larger haptic actuator and built a sort of video gamey rumble feature out of it. The idea is that an algorithm processes the audio data of whatever's playing and vibrates the phone when appropriate. It definitely makes more sense in some situations than others though. Playing Angry Birds was sort of trippy because I felt a haptic jolt as I released a bird and watched it crash into a tower of pigs. Feeling the phone rumble while playing music though felt more strange than valuable. And as usual, Sony built a little brother for the XZ2, the XZ2 Compact. And I'll just be honest with you right now, I sort of love this thing. It packs just about every feature that makes the XZ2 so capable and squeezes them into a small, curvaceous frame that feels fantastic to use. There are a few notable absences like the lack of wireless charging and no weirdo haptic rumble feature, but beyond that, it's kind of shocking how well everything works considering it's squeezed into such a tiny package. Obviously, that small screen is not going to be perfect for everybody, but for anyone who's looking for a less odious smartphone to just carry around in their pockets or in their bags on a daily basis, this has potential. My biggest concern right now, however, is battery life, but we'll have to wait and see how that turns out. Those kinds of trade-offs are unavoidable for smaller phones like this, but here's hoping the final experience is worth it. All told, it feels like Sony built a strong foundation for future smartphones in these two devices, and there's a lot to like right out of the gate. 
We only spent a little time with them though, and I need to stress that, so stay tuned for a full review and more nuanced insights as MWC 2018 continues.